the first since their relegation from the Super League. So a loud, shrill blast of the whistle from New Zealand official Michael Smale. Swinton kick down to Jordan Lilly. He takes the tackle, 10 away from his own line. Gill goes in at dummy half. We're up, up and away here on West Yorkshire Radio. Syndicated coverage on Bulls TV this afternoon. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest scores as and when they come in. But the championship, it's reached a thrilling, exciting climax here as Bradford, they look to build momentum ahead of the playoff game here at Bader Card Odsall next Sunday as we see Dan Smith, one of those four changes made this afternoon by Eamon O'Carroll, play the ball. Ten Shire halfway, short ball from Suter to Davis. They're on the halfway line on the last tackle as ball goes to Samet. Samet kicks to into a little bit of space and that will bounce up kindly for the Welsh international, Rhys Williams, who is brought down just inside his own 20 metre line. So Swinton Lions in possession here. And as we said, Alan Kilshaw's side, they'll be very similar to how the Batley Bulldogs play. They will really fight hard for every metre Every point, every opportunity must win at all costs for Swinton. Certainly a similar feel to the game at the Shea last weekend. Nil-nil gone, 90 seconds gone on the clock. Swinton, 10 Shire halfway on tackle number four as Gavin Benyon, the former Workington man, plays the ball. It's going to go out of dummy half from Eves. Now to Gibson. Ball goes on that left-hand side. Good defence from Samet there and Fulton. Swinton on the last tackle. They'll put boot to ball just shy of halfway as this one's going to be into the arms straight there from Lily. Lily now invites Holmes onto an attacking run. Holmes takes that one and he's rolled over 15 shy of halfway. Bradford back in possession, their second possession right at the start of this game this afternoon. Suter out of dummy half now, gives the ball to Myers on tackle two. The five shy of halfway. It's West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League. The season's exciting climax about to certainly deliver some drama this afternoon as we see Harvey Makin in that loose forward position. Balls come loose. It's a loose carry from Makin. First error of the afternoon. And that was a lovely bullet ball straight into the arms there. In fact, it's not Harvey Makin. It's uh, Logan Bayliss who I believe has lost the ball there. There was three blue navy shirted Swinton defenders who came in there and put the squeeze on and Bradford just happy to concede that error there 30 metres out from the Swinton try line. So Swinton, they will have head and feed at the scrum. We've had just over three minutes gone this afternoon here at Vardacard Odsall. And for the final time in the regular season, Let's see what happens this afternoon as we see Swinton up to halfway on tackle number two. Mitch Cox, the former Lee, well, they were named the Centurions in 2019, obviously the Leopards, as we see Jordy Gibson already trying to sprinkle some authority on proceedings. Lovely passing there, but that's good, sterile, uh, good strong defence there. Swinton's attack just a little bit sterile there, easy to sniff out as uh, young John Vaughan, the... St. Helens youngster carries Swinton five inside the Bradford half of the field. We're now going to see the forward once again, Gavin Benyon, wrapped up on what is the last tackle. So this is a good defensive set by Bradford. They've restricted Swinton to just 20 metres. The kick's going to come in from Stevens. He targets Holmes. Holmes takes that five away from his own try line. And as the sun just starts to peep out here behind the grey clouds at Bardacar Odsall, Bradford back in possession there, third possession at the start of this game. And they're moving the ball out from their own 20 metre line here with Jaden Myers, who gets a quick play of the ball in. Sam at a dummy half, and now Bradford will receive the penalty because Swinton are guilty. The offside encroaching inside the 10. So, a chance for Jared Samet. Sixth appearance for the Bulls this season. Made his debut in that 24 all draw against Barrow he will boot the ball deep into touch and it will be a chance for Bradford now to go on the attack they are 30 out from the Swinton line as Bayliss gets to his feet tackle one he'll play the ball Suter now to Makin Makin with the line break founds the support on the outside with Davis Davis is wrapped up there by Stevens and Benyon Another quick play of the ball from the Bulls. The 10 out in front of the post. Lily finds a runner there from Smith. 
and the former Castleford Huddersfield man is rolled over eight out in front of the Swinton Post. Bradford looking to get the early ascendancy. They might just get it, but Lily's pass has been picked off here. And that was great defensive work from Mitch Cox, who was really alert to that. And Bradford have come up with an error. Lily's pass picked off, and now Lily's gone high, and it's going to be Swinton's first penalty of the afternoon. Well, Eamon O'Carroll didn't follow suit with Paul Rowley and what Paul Rowley and Salford did last weekend in that game against Wigan. Eamon O'Carroll looking to find consistency and rhythm this afternoon. And when we did the press conference on Friday, he was really fired up and excited um, about sticking to his guns and selecting the strongest possible squad to face Swinton this afternoon as we see a big hit here from Lehman and Makin. And now Swinton have come up with an error and Bradford back in possession now. Another full set of six on the halfway line. So Lily's pass that was intercepted. Bradford back on the attack with Suter, who goes down the middle out of dummy half. And he's going to be wrapped up there by Lewis Hall and Mitch Cox. And some of the supporters saying that that tackle just went above the shoulder blade. Another loose pass by the Bulls. Certainly not clinical or composed with the ball in an attacking sense, Bradford. They're going to come down the middle now. Very direct route run from Harvey Make in the Wigan Warriors. Low knee, and they're on the last tackle, the Bulls here. On the last tackle, Samet puts boot to ball, looks for Myers. Swinton have got possession with Reese Williams, but he's lost it. The touch judge on that far stand side will say the Welsh international couldn't take Samet's crossfield kick in, so it's going to be a repeat set from the Bradford Bulls. They will go back to back here, and they'll have a fresh set of six, ten metres out from the Swinton line. So we've had... Just over seven minutes gone on the clock here at Bar the Card Oxel, and the scoreboard remains Bradford nil, Swinton nil. Bradford having some early pressure here on the Swinton line. Can they make that pressure count on the scoreboard? So it's a scrum in centre field underneath the post as Lily now gives the ball to Lehman, and Lehman's in at the corner. Max Lehman, too much power, too much pace. Goes past Bedding and Ritson, and Max Lehman opens the score in this afternoon. A confidence-boosting try for the former Brisbane Tigers winger. It's his sixth try of the season for Super Max Lehman. Exactly eight minutes gone on the clock. And it's the Bradford Bulls who lead at Swinton here in a must-win, crucial game for the Lions by four points to nil. And that was good attacking play. We've just said we've not really seen much calmness cohesion with Bradford's attacking play with a couple of errors and the ball going on the floor from the rook but that was a well executed move and that's something that I've witnessed when I've been privileged to uh, come to watch the Bradford Bulls training uh, sessions during the week here at Bardacard Odsall and there was nothing there that Dan Abram, T Ritz and Jake Spedding could do because it was a lovely cut out ball that missed out Davis, missed out Gill. Lehman from 15 out, coasted in at the corner. Kick predictor turned on for the first time this afternoon. It's saying 38% for Jordan Lilly from the touchline against the wind. That one will go straight between the posts and Bradford have an early 6-0 lead here this afternoon. Bradford 6, Swinton 0. West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League. Also Bulls TV. Well, we'll do our best to keep you up to date with the latest scores as and when they come in this afternoon. Certainly some big games taking place in the championship this afternoon. How good was St. Helens against Warrington uh, yesterday evening? Don't want to spoil the score if no one's managed to watch that game, but that one was a real humdinger. So here we are at Bada Car Odsall. Bradford 6, Swinton 0. Bradford back on the wee start. It's coming down the middle here with Logan Bayliss, who's going through a lot of work early doors. Gets the quick play of the ball in. Suter out of dummy half. Finds Fulton. Fulton juggles the ball, but keeps hold of possession. Somersaults himself forward. The Tenshire halfway. Lily looks for a 40-20, but the bounce of the ball is going to be kind for the former Barrow fullback, Dan Abram, who will take that 
from his own 10 metre line before he's crunched and munched and sandwiched there by Makin and Davis in a two man tackle. Josh Eaves, the former Lee St. Helens Wakefield nine, darts out a dummy half and makes five metres or so. They're 25 shy of halfway here at Swinton, trailing 6 0 to that early Max Lehman score after eight minutes. Reese Williams playing the ball, 15 shy of halfway as we see Jaden Hatton carry Swinton up to halfway on what is tackled for. There's one left on this set here for the Lions as the ball goes back in centre field here. What can Gibson do? Gibson gives the ball there to Benyon. Benyon's wrapped up, five inside the Bradford half, fifth and last tackle. Stevens puts boot to ball. It's a high hanging spiralling bomb, a difficult one for Holmes, but it takes that one under no real kick chase pressure. And then Holmes will make 10 metres after contact there with the back row forward, Mitch Cox, and now Bradford go back on the attack here, and Max Lehman gets a quick play of the ball in, Suter goes herring out a dummy half, snipes forward, tackle two, Bradford just shy of halfway, already getting on top in this game, you feel, as Lilly now goes short to Davis, and Davis will just take three Swinton Lions defenders with him, five inside the Swinton half, Suter dummy half, down the middle here with Smith, Smith second phase play behind to Makin, Makin's rolled up, 30 away from the Swinton try line, centre field, it is the last tackle here for the ball, Suter to Samet, Samet another high aerial bomb, targets Williams, this time Abram just gets there in the nick of time, it was a late call there from the Swinton fullback, but Reese Williams was underneath it and in the end Williams just backtracked a metre or so and allowed Abram to take it under pressure there from Romain Franco, Samet and Myers and now Swinton struggling to get a little bit of momentum forward here, the five metres in from the far stand side on their own 20 metre line as Gibson moves it along the line and Suter, very alert, efficient defence with John Davis wrapping up Gavin Benyon there and Swinton now are going to be on the last tackle deep inside their own half. It's Bradford 6, Swinton nil here. Stevens once again will kick from inside his own 30. Holmes takes it on the 10. He's up to the 20. He's up to the 30. He's Tom Holmes. He's up to the 40. He's finally brought down 45 out from his own line. And that was a crucial tackle there. It had to be from Lewis Hall and Mikey Wood, the former Bradford man. And they're up to halfway on tackle two of the Bradford Bulls. We've had just over 10 minutes gone here. Bradford six, Swinton nil. And the 10 inside the Swinton Lions half of the field. Just to the right of centre field. Suter dummy half. Misses out Smith, finds Lily. Lily's absolutely clattered there in the back by Lewis Hall. But Bradford immediately go on a surging run down the middle. Here we have him making the 25 out on the last. So they've got options towards the left. They go to the right with Samet. Samet looking to strike gold again. Kicks towards Franco and Myers. But Reese Williams puts the handbrake on and stays in the field of play. Once again, very alert kick chase pressure there from Bradford. Eamon O'Carroll will be pleased with that aspect and side of Bradford's game. If you are just joining us, we've had 12 minutes gone on the clock here at Bardacard Odsall, and it is Bradford Bulls 6. Swinton Lions, no score in this must-win game for Alan Kilshaw's side and the Swinton Lions, as we now see Swinton come up with error number four of the afternoon because Mikey Wood can't take that into the arms, and that now will give Bradford scrum head and feed 25 out from the Swinton try line in that centre field position. So it was Toulouse 64, Batley 16 yesterday, and the lady scores, it's all tight and tense, it's Barrow nil, Widnes nil, scoreless between Dewsbury and Sheffield, scoreless between York and Featherstone. So the only points this afternoon thus far have come from Max Lehman, and Bradford are looking to double their lead and advantage here after that error from Mikey Wood. A suitor now out of dummy half to Smith. Smith looks to offload the ball, but he's wrapped up in a free man tackle. It was Mitch Cox who just came in and stopped that right arm from offloading the ball, but he'll get a quick play of the ball in five away in front of the post. Samet to Fulton. Fulton's caught on the shoulder blade there, according to the official. Oozing ours from the crowd. Suter now towards Samet to Makin. 
making runs direct straight into some heavy Swinton Lions defensive traffic. And with a tackle left after this one, Bradford, five out, centre field. Suter. Sloppy pass, but it's going to come off for the balls. And Tom Holmes recovers possession. And he goes in at the corner. Pass T. Rickson. Pass Jake Spedding. It's Tom Holmes' eighth try of the season. Bradford do capitalise on Swinton's sloppiness with ball in hand. We've had 14 minutes gone on the clock and it's looking very, very good and rosy at this moment in time for the Bulls. Lehman and Holmes, the early try scorers for Eamon O'Carroll's side. And once again, with this blustery wind here at Bardacard Odsall, Jordan Lilly will have another tough conversion attempt from this touchline. Also currently scoreless between Rochdale and Hunsley at Spotland. So two early tries for the Bulls. Ten points to nil. I'm sure when you watch that one back on the uh, replay, you'll understand what I meant by a sloppy ball. It looked like Swinton were looking to pick it off, but Tom Holmes got there and from around about 12 metres out, he just had the momentum of racing forward to recover the loose pass and just went on a lovely diagonal run towards the corner. So kick predictor turned on. It was 38 for the first one. It's now saying 43% for Jordan Lilly, who's kicking at 79% this season. So two metres in from touch. And this one just won't curl enough. He's kind of gone for a Jonathan Thurston-esque conversion, trying to curl it in and use the wind as a navigation tool. But unfortunately for Jordan Lilly, the wind didn't help him, and that one just goes across the face. So Lilly, one from two, but so far so good for the Bulls. We've had 14 minutes gone on the clock on West Yorkshire Radio this afternoon, and it's Bradford Bulls 10, Sweeten Lions no score here. And it is still scoreless elsewhere in the championship at Craven Park, at the Tetley Stadium, at Bellevue, at the Recreation Ground, and at the LNER. Scoreless between York and Featherstone. Any score updates, we will give them to you when they are possible. But on the restart, Swinton are doing well because Bradford, after carries from Smith and Bayliss, they're still 10 metres out from their own try line. So there's a bit of renewed focus here from Alan Kilshaw's side as Fulton now carries Bradford up to their own 20 metre line and wins the penalty because they've simply just held Fulton down in the tackle there for too long for referee Michael Smale's liking and that will be Bradford's third penalty of the afternoon and it's going to be an opportunity for Bradford to earn some valuable metres upfield. So Romain Franco will tap the ball, give the ball to Samet, Samet now to Bayliss, Bayliss is going to be wrapped up there by Wood and Benyon, tackle one couple of metres shy of halfway, Suter out of dummy half now to Smith, Smith goes through a gap and he's brought down eight metres inside the Swinton half of the field, Suter's in there at dummy half, misses out making fine Samet, Samet now to Bayliss and Bayliss will carry Bradford 35 away from the Swinton line, just to the right of centre field, they're going short side now with Suter to Lilly to Fulton, Fulton's caught high again above the chest but the officials say no it's legal Fulton not happy with that one complains to Maddie Lynn on the far stand side as Bradford now have come up with error number three of the afternoon as Harvey Makin can't take in that pass from Jared Samet and that will give Swinton head and feed at the scrum well after the game last weekend as always you get a very honest opinion from Kieran Gill always won to face the media after his team uh, has disappointed and, and let down the fans. And we spoke to Kieran Gill after the game at the Shea and he very calmly told us, the interview, by the way, is on the West Yorkshire Radio SoundCloud page, but Gilly very calmly told us how and why the side lost. And uh, Gilly's always won never to resort to excuses and that's a good trait to have. And the frustration insight from Gilly was Halifax simply wanted to win the game more than Bradford. And uh, that's a bit of a, a damning, honest 
indictment. But Bradford, so far so good here. 10 0 on the scoreboard. 16 gone on the clock as Swinton move the ball down the middle with their big men and they're just shy of halfway here. Josh Eaves is at a dummy half. Suter and Bayliss, the A and B marker defenders. And Eaves now finds Abram back on the inside. A bit of second phase play from the Lions, but they're on the last tackle. So it'd be Stevens once again from halfway. Boots a ball. Holmes is going to take this one from the clouds and he's wrapped up 10 out underneath his own post. Samet's in there at dummy half. Short ball to Lehman who opened the try scoring for the Bulls in the eighth minute. So Bradford 10. Oh, there's a dangerous tackle here on Max Lehman. And it's coming from Jack Stevens. The former Salford half has kind of lifted Samet up above the horizontal and he's dumped him. Sorry, uh, Lehman up above the horizontal and he's dumped him head first. I think this might just be a penalty. We'll wait and see what the officials say. But both touch judges on the field. And it'll be Ryan Cox who will make the judgment on this one. To his credit, he's got straight back up off the floor as Max Lehman. But it will be another penalty to Bradford. Swinton, as we know, in their last two outings, they've had two players sent from the field, two players in the sim bin. They know they need to win this at all costs this afternoon. And Michael Smale taking a lengthy deliberation here with Ryan Cox over what might happen. Well, the doctor for the Bulls is on the field, just making sure everybody's okay. And I think it's just going to be a penalty to the Bradford Bulls. And Michael Smale just explaining to Bradford captain Jordan Lilly for this afternoon that it was a dangerous tackle. So it's a penalty here to the Bulls. Both Swinton and Bradford at 13 men. And Evan Skirt about to come on the field as Eamon O'Carroll rings the changes. So Kieran Gill, five inside the Swinton half. Davis in at Dummer half. Now to Lily. Lily along the line to Skirt. And the homegrown player is dumped and turned and twisted in a tackle. Suter dummy half now to Smith. Smith's 5-10 metre raid there on the right. Two tackles left for the Bulls. The lead Swinton by 10 points to nil. And Dan Smith's gone down here. Gets to his feet. I think there's a little bit of claret coming from the forehead there of Smith as May King goes on a attacking run. And that's the fourth tackle gone for Bradford. One remaining, 20 out. Inside the Swinton, 20 now with Davis. Davis runs a lateral line, now he straightens up and Davis carries Bradford. Ten out from the Swinton line, they're on the last tackle. Suter goes out a dummy half, grubber kick into the end goal area. Too much on that one from Mitch Suter. And that now will be a six tackle set, a relieving six tackle set for the Swinton Lions. Because they've just had to soak up a lot of pressure. And look at that for a big tackle from Mitch Suter. He just went straight into Jaden. Hatton lifted him, dumped him, all legal, all above board, and that's got this big Odsall crowd beating the drum, blowing the trumpet. Well, Alan Kilshaw's now ringing the changes to match what Eamon O'Carroll's done with Ant Walker, the former witness Bradford man, uh, getting to his feet and playing the ball as we see Swinton now 10 inside the Bradford half of the field, and this is probably in the opening 20 minutes, the Furvis Swinton have been in the Bradford half, but they've come up with yet another error as they try to overplay, force the pass, and Eben Skurs come up with that loose ball as he's held now in the tackle by Ant Walker. It's getting a little bit sloppy out there on the field. Swinton up to five errors now. That won't please uh, Alan Kilshaw. And I'm kind of guessing, even if Alan Kilshaw is resigned for Swinton to ultimately be in that playoff game against Keefley, Rochdale or Hunsley. He'll certainly be one to finish in the regular season with something to build on, something to work with uh, ahead of that game in a fortnight's time. Bradford on the last tackle, kick from Lilly, returned there by Abram up to his own 20 metre line. It's fast and it's relentless here now at Bardacard Odsell as Rhys Williams goes short side, wrapped up by Franco and Myers and now it's going to go on this short side here with John Vaughan with the red scrum cap and the young St. Helens low knees rolled over 15 shy of halfway if you're just joining us Ant Walker's dumped on the turf by Suter but he gets the offloading 
Stevens brings it over on this main stand side and it's Mitch Cox who's going to be wrapped up on tackle number four. Josh Eves out of dummy half, back to Ant Walker who must have only been on the field 90 seconds but he's had three big powerful carries. They're on the last tackle, the Lions, on halfway. Jordy Gibson, the former North Wales Crusaders man, kicks on the last straight down the throat of Holmes and Holmes is wrapped up 20 out from his own try line. So here at Barakar Odsall, we've had 20 minutes gone on the clock. It's Bradford 10, Swinton 0, and it's still scoreless between York and Featherstone. But Dewsbury are leading Sheffield by 12 points to 0, and Barrow a leading witness, 8-4 at Craven Park. Franklin Pelly's just come on the field for Harvey Makin, so Bradford now skittling and barrelling over Swinton defenders as Franklin Pelly's made 30 metres and Bradford now 20 out from the Swinton line as Eben Skur carries them forward, keeps the ball going to Suter. Suter's ball picked off the bootlaces by Samet. No look pass from Samet to Franco. Franco back to Samet, but the ball's gone forward into the arms of Reese Williams. Exciting, frenetic play there from the Bradford Bulls. Not quite sure they needed to be doing that, throwing it around with Gay Abandon, but it does remain Bradford 10, Swinton 0 after those early tries from Max Lehman and Tom Holmes. But certainly, what a shock result that would be. Dewsbury just one win all season, leading Sheffield by 12 points to nil. And Widness have just hit back at Craven Park. It's Barrow 8, Widness 8. Swinton here on halfway, on the last tackle, centre field. Mikey Wood gets to his feet, he plays the ball. Gibson boots a ball on the last, tracked there by Samet. Kick once again, taken for the seventh time this afternoon, cleanly by Tom Holmes. And Holmes will get Bradford up to their own 20 metre line. Now it's going to be Jaden Myers, tackle two, who's sandwiched there in a crunchy tackle by Lewis Hall and Ant Walker. Gets up a little bit gingerly there. And here goes Franklin Pelly on the charge. Ten shy of halfway. Tackle three here for the Bradford Bulls. Halifax leading Whitehaven by 16 points to four at the recreation ground. And Rochdale looking like they're heading to Cougar Park next Sunday for the League One grand final. They lead Hunslick 12-6 at Spotland as John Davis is wrapped up by T. Ritson. Jack Stevens. They're on the last tackle, the Bulls here, 10-0 the lead. Just inside the Swinton half, goes back on halfway to Lily. Lily looks up, targets Abram, takes it on the 10. Here's that red, amber and black, white-shirted wall of Bradford resilience. And they've managed to wrap Abram up, 15 out from his own line on tackle number one. We've got... 15 minutes to go to half time here at Barakar So low scoring game. Bit of a cool, crisp afternoon here. The wind not playing too much of a part on proceedings, it must be said at this stage. Swinton now playing the ball 20 shy of halfway as uh, Jordy Gibson is wrapped up there by Franco and Suter. Tackle four coming up for Alan Kilshaw's side. There's a drop of the shoulder from Jordan Case, the former Rochdale man. That's 10 valuable metres for Swinton. They're on the last tackle. The 40 out from the Bradford line. Gibson targets Holmes again. Holmes yet to come up with the error. Does well and takes that one under pressure there from Jaden Hatton. So great take here. And he's got a spring in his step as Tom Holmes after signing that one-year contract extension. Bradford 10, Swinton 0. Two quick fire tries at the LNER. Josh Hardcastle and Liam Harris. Six points apiece at the LNER. Well, at half time, we'll certainly go through the permutations of, of what is going to happen and the current lie of the land. But it's changing almost regularly as we speak because Widness at this moment in time, they are leading Barrow. So they're coming to Wadsall next Sunday as things stand. Bradford on the last tackle on halfway. Smith will play the ball. Suter back to Lilly. Lilly once again targets Abram. Takes it from his own 10 up to the 20. Good defence there from Lehman and Gill. And Swinton 20 out from their own line on tackle number one. 
as we see Stevens going there at dummy half, gives the ball to Spedding, the former St. Helens Barrow Featherstone man who's wrapped up 25 shy of halfway. Gibson goes in at dummy half to Williams, the Welsh international. He's wrapped up five shy of halfway. Swinton moving the ball now with Jordan Case. Looking for impact off the bench is Alan Kilshaw. Bradford thus far have managed to navigate and negate any extra pressure off the bench. As Swinton now try to give the ball and some room to T. Rickson, who picks it up. Is this one laterally 50 metres across the whole face of the pitch here for a couple of metres gain and he's wrapped up on the last tackle. So once again, it will be boot to ball, this time from Jordan Gibbons. Yes. Targets Holmes, okay. comes off the chest. And Bradford now oh. can turn defence into attack. Run, Tom Holmes Johnny. makes it's 25 metres shy of the halfway line and he wins the penalty because Swinton are just guilty well. of laying on. In it's a fourth mate. penalty that Swinton have conceded. The flop. This one 25 shy of halfway. Holmes injecting. If you get no, if he goes in after I've called held, it's got to be quick. That up in the tempo kind of attitude there and Swinton not liking it so conceding a very soft Jesus. penalty but here goes Franklin Pelly on an attacking run. 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 So Bradford Good. 35 away now from that oh, Swinton yeah. try line as Smith gives the ball some movement towards Fulton. Yeah, sure, Fulton 25 out. Now Johnny. Two. Johnny. Hold. Bradford looking to Go get two, a third try plans. here. Big hold this one. Swinton. Yep. Doing well in defence. Four players there. Three and and out. Down. That leaves them Back short down this left hand side. Hold. Is that where the ball hold. goes? Go. Sammet's calling for it. Summit gets it. They do go down the left. Okay, Sammet okay. finds the ball to Pelle. And Pelle from 25 okay, metres okay, out. Okay. He will go past T. Rickson, Dan Abram, and score a truly spectacular try. Well, and that was down all down to, down to the vision. The creative brilliance of Jared Summit. There was four defenders tackling Dan Smith. Summit looked up. He realised Swinton was short on the left edge. And that's where Summit went. He went down the left. Lovely offload. Out the tackle to Franklin Pelle. And Pelle now try number six of the season. And that now is six tries in his last five home outings. The scoreboard looking a little bit better for the Bulls because we're in the 28th minute here at Barra Carudsell and it reads Bradford 14 at Swinton nil and that has come off the back of Swinton messing around at the play of the ball referee Thanks, Mike Brian. Smale standing for no nonsense oh, this afternoon oh, there we go. all right Brownie that's quite refreshing <laughs> oh, I'm okay, mate. a match official not saying this isn't always the case but it is quite refreshing one minute, to see a match official stamp out that slow, grubby play because Bradford clearly in the mood to up the tempo and play rugby league. Swinton out, clearly Tom. trying to disrupt it. Jordan Lilly then, can Wait. he have the extra two points to the yes. penalty score? Yes, he can. Bradford Bull 16, Swinton Lions nil here at Bada Card Hudson. We've got 12 minutes yeah, to go mate, to half time. Right, and Bradford, yeah, is that right? yeah. well worth this yeah. free yeah. score lead. T. T. Well, hey, Sheffield Eagles have hit back yeah, yeah, against yeah. Jewsbury at yeah. the Tetley Stadium. It is Jewsbury 12, Turn Sheffield right, 4. Ready, well, Sheffield lose that. And witness win. There's a chance the Eagles are out of the playoffs. Got a well, it's an afternoon of high drama in the championship. On the restart, Eben Skurs caught high. It's now five penalties yes. to one in favour of the Bradford Bulls. <laughs> Wakefield, incidentally, leading Doncaster by 14 points to six. It's but it's it's still line, six points it? apiece Jesus. at the LNER Stadium. That's, that's Make sure that Hardcastle and Play Harris over. tries in a nail biter. One Bradford are looking for more points Hold. as we. Go. Head towards half time, just under 10 minutes left here in this first half. As players now, over Lewis. on the Swinton. So, once again, Swinton go Lions ill discipline, just advancing Bradford up the field. Here goes Lily now, misses out okay. Davis, finds Holmes. Holmes is going to be wrapped up in a two man tackle, still 15 out. This one to the left hand side. Three of the here, 
Nice Two runner. tackles for Bradford to play oh, with here. 16 nil the Bulls lead. Go, three. Suter now. Lily misses out. Smith finds Skur and Skur gets those oh, pool table legs driving forward. Hold. And he's 10 Go. metres out underneath right the team, Swinton Johnny. Lions post. Lily now misses out Pele, finds Samet. Samet now to Fulton. Fulton brought down by a free Swinton line. Lions defensive tackle. Go, and the two metres out here on Go. the last tackle, the Bulls. Okay. Pele's got the ball no, with God, the line no, begging. Fixed on the you ten. can see what the Bulls were trying to the do there tackle. on the power play. Suda out of dummy half, straight into the arms Deck. of Pele. Pele could have taken yeah. it in. Just Bradford's fifth yet. error know, in this first half, and it remains Bradford rock, Bulls. Yeah. 16, Swinton Lions, edge, hold, nil mate. here at Bar the Card also. It's still 6-6 six, six between York and Featherstone. It's Chewsbury 12, One, Sheffield two. 4, hold. and look at this, Go. Barrow 8, Absolutely Witness double. 10. Oh, well, the games that matter this afternoon, very, very little hold. between hold. the two sides in each of those three fixtures. As we said, time three. and time again in 24, the championship simply unpredictable. So what can Swinton offer now? Help! A race. attacking for it up to halfway. Four, it's been all Bradford in the last five minutes. Okay, okay. 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 On tackle three from Jack Stevens. Holmes once again is going to shift across. He'll take Jesus. it. Okay. And it's a risky pass to Max Lehman. And Max Lehman's flying here. And Bradford yes. are going to score a sensational try as Max Lehman puts the afterburners on. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. Risky one. stuff from Tom Holmes. He put everything on black. And the roulette ball, it landed <laughs> on black 11. And Lehman. He has absolutely got the He's supporters lost. in this Here's big Upsell so crowd oh, ecstatic. No. <laughs> it was <laughs> from Bradford's own try line. It was nearly picked off Whoa. by Dan Abram. But Max Lehman, <laughs> he's rolled back the clock. 12 months to his impressive well, try scoring well, form with the hey, Brisbane Tigers in the Queensland <laughs> Cup. <laughs> 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 that was a super spectacular try and I know it was the Bradford Bulls awards night last Friday but let me tell you if that try happens that is down for one of the tries of the season but it was high risk it was high percentage play from the Bulls because Holmes had got it he dealt with the kick and it was that pass that I mean, very nearly was picked off gone. on his own try line <laughs> by Dan time. Abram, who was yeah. probing and hunting. But on moments like that, that will delight this <laughs> big <laughs> Bradford <laughs> crowd. <laughs> Lehman, his Michael second Bell. try of the afternoon. And it's an Odsall classic. I get that Kick predictor turned on for Jordan <laughs> Lilly. Five metres in from touch, in. it's seen 48%. Can he contend with the wind? Yes, Wait. he can. Yep. Another touchline conversion from Jordan Lilly. Right, Bradford coasted Where? in this one this afternoon. Bradford 22, yeah. nice Swinton nil. We're in the 35th minute here at Bader Card also. So in the closing moments of the first half, where Bradford have done exactly what Eamon O'Carroll, their head coach, demanded nice and expected of them. Stay behind. Certainly a very, very dominant <laughs> performance. Oh. There's been a lot of patience. <laughs> Although Bradford, the we've just put the mockers on them a little bit. They've allowed the yep, restart right. from wait, Jordan wait. Gibson wait there, wait there. to go straight into touch. So, what a kick that was. this will be Swinton's best no, position Hold. of this afternoon. Hold. Go, We're coming pitch. into the final moments okay, of the game okay. and now nah, they've nah. knocked the ball on at dummy half. There was no real pressure there on Lewis Hall. Get the line. And the one that. man at club does. servants, an ever present for Swinton, he's just took just his eyes the off the here, ball the as it place. was being played oh, by yeah. Jordan Case. And from 20 metres out in front of the Bradford post, Swinton come up with error number seven of the afternoon. And that Hits is him, the real Killing oh, error. Him. That will ah! not please Alan okay. Kilshaw. From the scrum then, the 20 out from their own post, Bradford. One! They lead 22 points to nil after a couple of spectacular try scoring efforts this afternoon. But let me tell you, the ball from Holmes backing 
field. Really to to off, but Jax Lehman go. has gone 100 metres. A valiant effort Manage. from Young Saint Terry's learning John Vaughan. Hold. But in the end, Lehman applied Three. the afterburners and he was he gone. And here goes Suter up to halfway now. One five minute to ten go, Mike. inside the Swinton go, half. Go, go, go. Well, Come on, quicken it. Time who to here by the card Hudson. Four tries to nil. 22 nil on the scoreboard. Fulton. Picks the ball out Mass! of the half, and Bradford are on the last ball tackle himself. here. Well, yeah, Fulton's so gone down here, second, and he's hurt himself. Can you pass he the ball? scooped the ball no. out of dummy half, and he's he went straight the into yeah, no. nothing in it, nothing in it. young John Vaughan and Jordan Gibson, who were the two fast Swinton tackle. Lions yeah, defenders yeah. on the far stand side. And just, uh, I think this might be a hit try here for Zach Fulton because immediately there's concern as the Paul's physio and medical team come on the field. He's lying flat back. Sorry, flat on his back here water. on the Bader yeah. Card Odsall played surface. York ah, have just gone in front at the LNER Stadium. It is York 10, Featherstone 6. So after Featherstone opened the scoring with Josh Hardcastle, it is Liam Harris and former Bradford man Joe Brown who potentially could be knocking Featherstone Rovers out of the playoffs because look at this for a score. Dewsbury now lead Sheffield by 16 points to four. 16-4, Dewsbury lead the Sheffield Eagles. And this is probably the game of big importance for Swinton because Barrow Trail witness at home by 10 points to eight but crucially for Swinton and Alan Kilshaw's side as Zach Fulton remains down on the field here. Hey Paul, very, very concerning injury coming seconds, up for Zach right Fulton. Here? Jack Owens and yeah, Tom Gilmore and it, that's with correct. the points. It is Barrow 8, Five. Widness 10. Well, just looking at those scores, Widness would move up to 29 points. It would be Sheffield who miss out on the playoffs. And as things currently stand, Featherston no, will be coming to bar the card on till next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep like you up to date with the best we can. Uh, Zach Fulton's back on his feet here. Oh. We're in the final minute of this first half. Right, mate. Tackle five. Right, and Bradford oh, will right. have a play of the ball. Just hold it there. There's no, nothing Zach in the Fulton tackle remaining on the field. Tackle five. 22 metres out. It's a nice tackle. Go, Zach. So oh. Michael Smale's hand held aloft. Oh, Sammy okay, right, kick, kick. Clear. Right. kick chase pressure from Lily Davis. Also, Kieran Gill oh, okay. and Swinton are going to be forced in goal here oh, okay. as Bradford oh, on that kick oh, chase oh, pressure. Oh, they have oh, done well. Oh, they're giving a try. I'm not sure what's happened there. But Samet's crossfield kick, a Swinton player had the ball five metres out from his own try line. The ball has been lost in the tackle and it's been grounded by a white shirted Bradford player. We might have to wait for the. No, he's surrendered, no one's on him. Ball carrying arms off, one on one. He's asked before he hits the ground, it up. Well, there you go. Logan Bailey is judge to have ground the ball. It looked like Bradford were going to force the goal line dropout. There was too many players around to see how that ball came out. But as the hooter sounds, Samet once again, it's his third try assist of this first half. And Jordan Lilly will make no mistake because this one is right at the side of the post. So Logan Bailey, the former Brisbane Broncos, North Queensland Cows boy, front row forward. He gets his first try in the Bradford Colours and Lily adds another two points. Half-time well, Hooter had already gone, so half-time here at Bardacard Odsall. The final round of championship. Then they have from on-field performance. So that is what IMG are clearly looking for. They're looking for clubs with a lot of fans and a healthy balance sheet over on-field performance. And we've just had boot to ball here right at the start of this second half. Swinton have been awarded their second penalty. We didn't even get to tackle number one there. Someone's gone high on Jack Stevens, according to the officials. So the ball will be blasted into touch deep. And maybe Alan Kilshaw has told his side what the scoreline is at Craven Park. Who knows? Certainly all to play for between Barrow and Widness. 
all to play for here if Swinton can stage a remarkable comeback. But this Bradford defence, it is in a very hungry mood and it doesn't want to give any leeway to the blue-shirted Lions who are up to halfway here after Ant Walker took tackle one. Jordy Gibson tackle two. Eves is in at dummy half. Now it's in centre field as Tyra Knott has come on the field for his first taste of action. So five tries in that first half. Bradford leading 28-0. Eves goes short side to Vaughan. Free St. Helens lone ease in this Swinton side. And right at the start of this second half with Bradford leading 28 points to nil. Swinton are going to put boot to ball here with Jordy Gibson, 25 out from the Bradford line. They will target Holmes once again, who has been really safe under that high ball, and he'll be in man of the match contention as he takes a crunching tackle from Jaden Hatton there and Josh Eaves. And now Bradford have a little bit of work to do because Swinton have the balls two metres out from their own line with Jaden Myers, who's going to play the ball here, although he's lost it facing his own line. So Jaden Myers has come up with the error here and this will give Swinton an early advantage right at the start of this second half. Sixth error from the Bulls, the first of this second half and a chance now for Swinton to try and narrow the gap. I'm sure Alan Kilshaw at half time has told his side to be calm, be patient, start the game as if it's nil-nil and cut down on that silly coach killing ill discipline that has hurt the Lions so many times so 28-0 that's the deficit Swinton need to overcome and it's another penalty here to the Lions because Bradford are guilty of being offside inside the 10 so two quick penalties to the Lions Myers with the error and now Swinton they're not going to tap the ball they're going to go for the scrum Right in front of Bradford's post, and you almost feel here, Jack Stevens and Jordy Gibson, the two Swinton Lions halves, have something up their sleeve. Here we go with Stevens then. Oh, well, Stevens has lost the ball under no real pressure, picked up by Samet, and I think that just sums up Swinton's afternoon thus far at Bardacard Hudson, as now Bradford keep the ball going with Skur. Skur gets it back to Fulton. Bradford Tenshire halfway on what is tackle one. He'll get to his feet, he'll play the ball. Holmes at dummy half to Bayliss. Three Swinton defenders bringing down Big Logan Bayliss, the 24-year-old Scottish international. He'll get to his feet, he'll play the ball. Skur goes on the attacking raid down the middle. Bradford up to the Swinton 40-metre line. Centre field. We've had two and a half minutes gone of this second half. Set restart given to the Bulls. Because Evan Skur was just being held down in the tackle. So tackle one of a fresh set. Tyra not 20 away from the line. Holmes now to Pelle. Tackle two. Bradford 10 metres out. Centre field attacking the south bank end in this second half. As another loose ball misses out Summit, But it's picked up by Franco and the former Catalans Wakefield man. Takes the tackle, 15 out, just to left-hand side of the post. Lily in front of the post, now to Bayliss. Wrapped up there by Hatton and Vaughan. Two left for the Bulls. Eight out from that Swinton line. Summit in front of the post, misses out Pelle to Lily. Lily to Gill! Try number 20 of the season for Kieran Gill. And if you've missed it, Kieran Gill... Second game back from that hip injury. He thought he had one last weekend against Halifax. That one was denied by the officials. This one given. And Bradford now really, really coasting here at Bardacard Hudson. That instinctive roll off the boot of Lily and Kieran Gill. He gets try number 20 of the season. And Kieran Gill. He likes scoring against Swinton. That is his fifth try now against Swinton in 2024. This, of course, the third meeting between the two sides. They met in a quarter-final of the 1895 Cup and then they met at Haywood Road. Bradford winning both those. It was tight and tense here in the 1895 Cup semi-final. Only really settled with a, a Jordan Lilly drop goal in the last 10 minutes. It was 21 points to 12. 
a little bit more convincing for the Bulls at Harewood Road when they went there on Bank Holiday Sunday a couple of months ago. 38 points to 12 that time. Well, the platform was certainly set there by Skirt, by Pele, by Bayliss. And it was that lovely little roll down off the boot from Lille. Precision, grounded by Gill in the corner. From the far stand touchline then. That one looks good, and it goes between the posts. Bradford Bulls running riot here at Bardacard Odsall. Six tries to nil. Scoreboard very, very favourable. Bradford 34, Swinton nil. And that will be just exactly what Eamon O'Carroll would have wanted right at the start of this second half, knowing that Swinton were going to show a response. And now Swinton have gone short, but Romain Franco was alert to that short restart. And now Bradford go on the attack once again. They're 10 shy of halfway on tackle number two. Bayliss is getting to his feet and he's playing the ball here. Just pushed back there by Ant Walker and Lewis Hall. Here goes Pele from a standing start and Pele's away. Pele's still going. Beats one, beats two. Find the support of Lilly on the inside. Electric passage of play there from the Bulls. The 20 out from the Swinton line. As Lilly's told to get to his feet and play the ball. Davis now to Skur. Skur's run is halted by former Bradford man. Ant Walker who comes in and wraps him up. The 10 away now with a tackle left. Samet takes the line on back to Pele. Pele puts the big door arguing. And Pele is doing it all himself. Who can stop Franklin Pele? Half of the Swinton side couldn't. It's back to back tries. And it's a bulldozing, blockbusting run from Bradford's human bulldozer. Franklin Pele, try number seven of the season. Bradford seven for the afternoon. And Bradford now carving Swinton Lions up here. We've only had six minutes gone of this second half. But Bradford, they're playing with conviction. Very, very clinical play there. And when you watch that fame from Pele straight into the face of Mitch Cox and Lewis Hall, there's no exaggeration. He took half the Swinton team over the line with him. That's seven tries now, all scored at Bader Card Odsall by Franklin Pelle, who will be with the Bradford Bulls for next season. And one of the reasons when you speak to Franklin Pelle about him agreeing that deal, it was down to the fact Bradford will be there or thereabouts in the Super League IMG placings at the end of this season. Jordan Lilly then, 10 metres in from touch. Pushes this one wide. Booze and G is from the Bulls faithful here. Bradford 38, Swinton Lions nil, West Yorkshire Radio. Also syndicated coverage on Bulls TV. Witness have gone further in front against Barrow. It is now Widness 18, Barrow 8. So that is looking well and truly like Widness will be in the playoffs. Still a long way to go. But Dewsbury 16, Sheffield 4, and it's York 10, Featherstone 6. As things currently stand, York will host Widnes. Bradford will host Featherstone. That's as it currently stands. And Bradford have made a hash of the restart. Swinton finding a bit of space, and the ball has gone dead in goal. So Bradford now forced to drop out via the boot of Jared Samet. So Swinton looking for a response here. They've not been able to deal with that Bradford's intensity, which has been backed by the forward pack. Ant Walker takes tackle two for Swinton. Balls come loose in the tackle as Franklin Pelle has just put a big crunching tackle in there. And that is now error number 11 of the afternoon for the Swinton Lions. So scrum ahead and feed to the Bradford Bulls. No sooner have Bradford had a little bit of a, a switch off after that barnstorming Franklin Pelly score. They have come up 
with an error. Well, this is a very highly intense performance by the Bradford Bulls. And I'm sure Eamon O'Carroll will be pleased thus far with the improvements that he has seen his Bradford side make. There's still a few areas that Bradford need to clean their game up on, but so far so good. The lead swing to my 38 points to nil here. As Logan Bayliss goes on a run down the middle. Five shy of halfway. Ott, out of dummy half, makes five, ten, fifteen, twenty metres forward. And all of a sudden, Bradford, they've got that ascendancy. They've got that momentum. They're inside the Swinton half, looking to attack from deep. As it goes out of dummy half from Ott to Lily. Lily now to Bayliss. Bayliss, once again, a big, strong carry from him. And let's not forget, Kevin Apo, Jaden Ockinball, Michael Lawrence, all rested this afternoon. Holmes has it, last tackle, boots a ball, targets young Dan Abram, who takes it on his own line, scampers forward, takes the tackle in the field of play, on their own 10 metre line, Vaughan's in there at dummy half, what can Reese Williams do? Well, he's just run straight into a Pele Skur sandwich, and he gets up a little bit gingerly and groggily there, and I suspect anybody who runs into Pele and Skur would feel the same. Swinton now on tackle free, still inside their own 20 metre line, Eves, to Gibson, to Wood. Former Bradford man Mikey Wood wrapped up on his own 20 centre field. Tackle four coming up here for the Lions as they move the ball over on that right hand edge. But Stevens is wrapped up there by Mitch Souter, I do think it was. Another quick play of the ball. And Swinton forced to kick from deep, such is Bradford's dominance in the forward and defensive department. 38 points to nil on the scoreboard. Jaden Myers has done well. He's returned the ball up to halfway as we see Franklin Pelly leave the field. Nathan Mason will come on for his fourth appearance. And it's going to be Nathan Mason who just goes charging down the middle looking for the offload out the back door. But he's wrapped up there by Gavin Benyon. Still, it's a quick play of the ball that sets the platform. Samet to Lily. Lily. Goes into a two-man tackle led by Josh Eves and Jake Spedding. And he's brought down over on the far stand side. Two left on this set for the Bulls. A real strong start after half-time from Eamon O'Carroll's side. It was 28-0. Just seen quick-fire tries from Gill and Pele. We've had 12 minutes gone in this second half as the sun just illuminates by the card Odsall here. Pitch looking a little bit worn and torn. Clearly there's been a lot of downpour this week in Bradford. You can see where the sand's been applied on the field. And referee Michael Smale stopping the clock here because there's been a bit of head-to-head -head contact. So the doctor will come on the field and just assess. But it is Bradford 38, Swinton nil here at Bardacard. So those four changes once again made by Eamon O'Carroll. Remain Franco for Jaden Ockinbaugh, Jared Samet for Lee Gaskell, Dan Smith for Kevin Apo, and Nathan Mason for Michael Lawrence. Lady scores elsewhere in the championship. Barrow have hit back against Widnes. It's Barrow 14, Widnes 18 at Craven Park. Look at this for a scoreline. Paul March and the Dewsbury Rams lead at Sheffield Eagles by 22 points to four. And Whitehaven have taken the lead against Halifax. It's Whitehaven 22, Halifax 16. And we've just close to an hour gone. York Featherstone must have kicked off a little bit earlier than Bradford Swinton. It is York 10, Featherstone 6 at the LNER. Jake Spedding leaves the field with that HIA. He's been deemed he can't continue. Well, Jack Render has scored a try for Hunslet. They now lead Rochdale by 24 points to 18. So it's looking like it could be an all West Yorkshire affair at Cougar Park next Sunday in that, relig uh, in that League One Grand Final. And of course... The winner of that is almost certain to play Swinton, who trail Bradford 38-0 as Lily puts boots a ball on the last into the air. A shallow kick, scurs the kick chase defender, wraps up Dan Abram and Swinton back in possession. But Bradford's defence, it is on top here, not giving the Lions an inch.
Williams. Brought down there by Makin and Franco. Just outside his own 20 metre line. Liam Cooper, the former Halifax, Whitehaven, Sheffield man's just come on the field here for Jake Spedding. And Swinton are on the last tackle on halfway here. As Hatton plays the ball, Eves out a dummy half back to Hatton, to Williams. Franco comes in, but Swinton keep it going. Cooper gives it to Gibson. Gibson crossfield kick, still on the last, taken by Lehman, and Lehman is brought down there in a two-man tackle on the far stand side. That was led there by T. Ritson and John Vaughan, the two St. Helens loanees. So, 15 minutes gone here at Bader Card Odsall. 25 to go of Bradford and Swinton's regular season. And Bradford, with a very healthy, convincing lead on the scoreboard to take into that playoff game, which at this moment, it is looking like it'll be Feverson Rovers coming to Bader Card Odsall as Lily. Kicks early in the count, looks for a 40-20, but Abram shifts across, deals with a danger. But look at this. Look at the energy. Look at the effort. No sooner has Abram stopped the 40-20 and run lateral, is trapped just outside his own 20 by Nathan Mason and Eben Skur. Bradford not giving Swinton any chance to get back in this game. Eaves to Hatton. Hatton, five shy of halfway here for the visitors. Bradford, 38, Swinton nil. 24 minutes to go to half uh, to full time. As now Swinton do break clear and there's a rare opportunity here for the Lions as they move the ball out on the far stand side. But John Vaughan has been wrapped up here. But it will be a penalty because somebody, I do believe, has taken one of the Swinton players out who was running up on the outside so it was a line break here by Swinton over on the far stand side John Vaughan took the pass and I think it was Kieran Gill and Max Lehman who came in with that crucial tackle to stop the try unfortunately according to the officials someone's gone high on T Rickson who was also part of that support play so 6-4 the penalty count Swinton will have the ball in front of the Bradford post even at this stage with 22 minutes to go it will be nothing more than a consolation as Swinton now look to open the Bulls defence up but George Gibson's not going to get past Nathan Mason Eben Skirt and Romain Franco well, the cheers in the background are going to tell you that Swinton have lost the ball once again in good ball territory. And that, again, is another coach killer. A 13th error now from Swinton. And these errors are just hurting Swinton's ability and chance of getting some and building some momentum. Evan Skirt is dumped on his backside above the horizontal. 20 out in front of his post, so Bradford given the penalty here. Crowd not happy at that. Well, Bradford's defence just too strong, keeping Swinton to zero. They've kept Jews, Britt and Whitehaven to zero here at Bader Card Old Sol, and we're about to see, which will be a big plus for Bradford's own playoff game next week, if it is Featherstone who come here to keep the Swinton Lions to zero. Well, the game's just getting a little bit sloppy and scrappy, you feel. And Bradford will try to avoid going down that particular alley. So Nathan Mason's playing the ball, 12 metres out in front of the Swinton post. It'll go from up to Smith. Smith's back out there on the field for his second stint, and he's eight metres out on tackle number three. Two to go for the Bulls. They've already crossed Swinton's line seven times. Samet flick on pass to Holmes, to Myers, and Jaden Myers, try scorer last week against Halifax. He was a try scorer in the 38-12 win against Swinton earlier in the season. In his 24th appearance of the season, Jaden Myers, try number 11. And that was good fast hands from the Bradford Bulls. Nothing there that Swinton could do because they were all at sea defensively 
trying to stop Bradford's big man. It was Smith who played the ball. Then it was Summit. Summit to Holmes. Bullet pass from Holmes to Myers. And Myers just coursing past Williams, past Hatton. Full back Abram. Not at home. So eight of the best for the Bulls. 42 points to nil. We've just hit the hour mark here at Bardacard Odsall. And there's a chance here for Bradford potentially to hit the half century this afternoon if they feel that they are in the mood. Kick predictor turned on. 24% for Lily because it's right on this main stand touchline. But he has been impressive with the boot this afternoon. Five from seven thus far. And it's still York 10. Featherstone 6 at the l &E Stadium. Witness have just scored against Barrow to take it out to 22 points to 14. What drama on the last day of the championship regular season. And Jordan Lilly does convert from the touchline. So with just under 20 minutes to go by the card Hudson, Bradford 44, Swinton nil. Lehman with a brace, Holmes, Pelly, Bayliss, Gill and Myers on the scoreboard. Hunsley have gone further in front against Rochdale as Jordy Gibson's restart goes sailing out on the full. Bradford will be awarded their eighth penalty of the afternoon and this is just more self-inflicted Pressure that Swinton are putting themselves under. Whitehaven 22, Halifax 20 at the recreation ground, and it's still Dewsbury 22, Sheffield 4. It'll only be Dewsbury's second win of the season, but what a win for Paul March because it'll send Sheffield out of the playoffs. Bradford now on the attack, looking for more points, potentially the half century. Well, it's a penalty here to Bradford at their nine for the afternoon now because Ebenskirs played the ball and you've got Swinton markers laying all over Ebenskir, not clearing the rook. And that was not allowing Tyra not to get the ball. So Bradford now, after points from Jaden Myers, they will go hunting their ninth score of the afternoon. 44 points to nil here, 18 minutes to go. Tyra not out of dummy half. Mason played the ball. Tyra not looking for try number two of the season. He's got four players around him and he's pushed back in the field of play. Smith's in there at dummy half. Finds Lily. Lily cross field kick looking for Gill. Gill palms it out wide. That one's gone into touch. Not quite sure why Bradford did that there. I know they've got a very healthy lead on the scoreboard and if it comes off it's all well and good but Probably just seen Bradford straying away from the game plan there. I'm sure Raymond O'Carroll wouldn't have asked for that to happen. Don't think he'll be too critical that Bradford have disburned an opportunity early in the set at 44 points to nil. Swinton will be relieved though that they have not seen their line breached for the ninth time this afternoon. So... The season enters the final quarter here at by the card Odsall. 18 to go. And as things currently stand, York will host Witness next Sunday and Featherstone Rovers will come to by the card Odsall. Game's just getting a little bit scrappy, as I said a moment ago here. Swinton awarded a penalty. Gibson will fire it into touch on halfway and once again Bradford very firm defensively eaves out a dummy half now it goes to former Bradford man Mikey Wood who scored against Leeds you might remember in the 2019 Challenge Cup victory over Leeds a game that will forever go down in Bradford folklore second carry in this set from Mikey Wood gives the ball to Benyon who's rolled over by Samet and Makin. Smith also the third defender there. As the ball now comes down with Ant Walker. Ball goes over on that right-hand side and Swinton have lost the ball again.
guilty of overplaying there. Gibson to Cox. Cox has lost the ball, 20 out from the Bradford line. Well, I'm not quite sure why we were listening to a bit of dancing in the dark there, but it's got the Bull supporters beating the drum and, and chanting. Well, 14 errors now from Swinton this afternoon. Mitch Suter about to come on the field here. Well, for the final time in the regular season, the four players who we're going to put up for the uh, man of the match this afternoon, Franklin Pelly, is going to be on there for his impact and his two tries. Tom Holmes is almost certainly on there for his ability to deal with the kicks from both Stevens and Gibson. We're also putting Jared Samet in there. Not a difficult thing to do after missing out last week, but with Lee Gaskell having a back injury, he's come in and he's added that calmness and experience and leadership. So Samet's also in there. And I think we've got to put Eben Skur in as well. Eben Skur now going down the middle, finds the support of Suter. Suter's just come on the field for Jordan Lilly, incidentally. And what a season Jordan Lilly's had. He's played in all 31 games. The only Bradford player to do so. Skur once again down the middle. Oh, lovely offload from Skur. Now it goes to Mason. Mason's five metres out under the post on the last. Suter, Grubbers into the in goal. No, he doesn't. He's held up short of the line. And uh, Bradford concede and turn over possession a metre out from the Swinton line. Very, very nearly the half century for the Bradford Bulls. So those are the four we're going to go with. It's been a very difficult one to judge this afternoon, but we've... Uh, Seven, sorry, 16 minutes left on the clock here at Bardacard. Old Sullen Bradford leading 44 points to nil. We're going to go with Tom Holmes. We're going to go with Franklin Pelly, Jared Samet and Eben Skur. Kevin Apo, incidentally, currently leading the uh, man of the match votes this year with four. Be interesting to see who wins the, uh, the coveted Bradford Bulls Live man of the year. As once again... Bradford's defence has just taken Swinton down into the cul-de-sac on tackle four. They've just drilled the ball into touch on halfway. And now Swinton, who have had a lot of fatigue put into their defence by this Bradford intensity and the way they are up in the tempo and playing the game this afternoon and really taking the game to Swinton. You almost suspect a ninth try could be on the cards here. Well, Barakar Odsalt bathed in sunshine here for the final 15 minutes of the regular season. Max Lehman tackle one, Smith tackle two, Bradford 30 out, centre field. It's been a real promising performance this afternoon for the Bulls as we see Samet now to Mason. Mason bounces off one, finally brought down there by Cooper and Case. Just outside the Swinton 20, Suter to Samet to Smith, Smith arches his back, faces the Swinton line, looks for the offload, can't find anybody, he's told to play the ball as Bradford goes short side with Ott, Ott through a gap, nearly half chance, Tyron Ott, the former North Sydney Bears man, he's five away from the Swinton line, they're on the fifth and last tackle, Davis tries to pinch one out of dummy half and his run is halted there by Abram and Vaughan, so Bradford 44, Swinton nil, 14 and a half to go here at Barakar Odsil. They've turned over possession right on top of the Swinton line. And the Swinton tried to move the ball out from their own try line here. It remains Barrow 18, Widness 22. Sheffield have hit back, but is it too late for them against Jewsbury? Paul March and the Rams. Lead Keith Senior and Simon Brown's Eagles by 22 points to eight. And look at this from the LNER Stadium. It has been 10 6 throughout the second half, and that is how it remains. And that is a lifeline for Featherstone Rovers because that Sheffield result is going to send Featherstone and James Ford to Barricard Odsall next Sunday as things stand. Swinton, incidentally, they've had a full set of six. Not really been able to do anything because of Bradford's intensity in defence. So they've kicked the ball from the halfway line. And Samet goes in behind Tom Holmes here. Just shy of halfway after Tom Holmes has made 30 metres. Moving the ball from centre field to right of centre. 
and five metres in from this main stand side. Tackle two, centre field with Myers. Suter, dummy half, now Lehman. Spectacular 100 metre effort in that first half. Down the middle they go now with Smith. Smith offloads, draws defenders in, gives it to Bayliss. Bradford 18, 16 metres out on tackle number four. Looking for try number nine and potentially the half century for the third time this season at Bader Cardo. So the suitor takes Ant Walker and Jordan Case with him. They're on the last tackle, the Bulls now. They lead 44 points to nil. 14 minutes left in this one. Samak with a drop goal in front of the Bulls. He's missed it. He's iced it. Jared Samet, thought he'd scored it, but he's pushed it wide. And that was good pressure there from Josh Eaves. He went straight into the vision and eye line of Samet. Well, Samet thought he'd, he'd got it and got his name on the scoreboard. As it is, it's going to be a six-tackle set coming up here now for the Bulls. Well, I wonder what Eamon O'Carroll there. Uh, feels about that one who knows it's 44 points to nil job well done and Sweetson have come up with another error here because Gavin Benyon has coughed the ball up under a tackle from Suter and Smith so no sooner have Bradford missed the drop goal a 15 fair of the afternoon and now Bradford surging forward on the attack they're like a spring tide here the 20 out with Davis now it's Suter to what? To Samet. Samet ducks under one. It's still going, Jared Samet, the Maltese international. And he's five out from the line before a tackle from Liam Cooper will force the former Barrow, Workington, Crusaders man into an error. It's only Bradford seven fair of the afternoon. Scoreboard remains. Bradford 44, Swinton nil. And we've got 11 minutes to go here at Bardacar Utsal. Well, whatever happens, we will be live on air next week. Same time, same place, West Yorkshire Radio, 20 to 3. And as things currently stand, it's looking like it's going to be Bradford against Featherstone. We will confirm those playoff fixtures at full time, but it is still... Barrow 18, Witness 22, it's still York 10, Featherstone 6, and it's still Dewsbury 22, Sheffield 8. Here at Bader Cardot, so Swinton. A 25 shire halfway after that Jared Samet error. Josh Eaves out of dummy half. Stevens kicks. Abram looks to regather. Bounce of the ball's kind. Swinton recover possession. 10 inside the Bradford half of the field. Mikey Wood recovered possession, the former Huddersfield Bradford man. Now Swinton spread the ball towards Hatton. Hatton's wrapped up though by making Also Samet involved in that tackle and Myers. Ball goes back in centre field here. Cross field kick from Lewis Hall. Hall, I think he's skied it. Dead in goal, out on the full. That will be a six tackle set here for the Bradford Bulls. And it remains 44 points to nil with exactly 10 to go on the clock. Well, Bradford certainly doing what Eamon O'Carroll wanted of them in terms of being patient for the majority of this game. It's just got a little bit away from the game plan, you feel, in the last 10 minutes or so. After that try from Jaden Myers in the 60th minute, as Kieran Gill now carries Bradford up to halfway, offloads the ball behind him to Suter. Suter somehow gets behind Gavin Benyon and goes on another attacking run on that left-hand side. Finally brought down there by Stevens and Ritson. Back down the middle, they're going to go with Smith. Spent four seasons at Castleford. And Dan Smith is held in the tackle, 20 metres out from the Swinton line as Tyra Knott's kick comes off the back of Mitch Cox. It's not played it, so it's play on. And now Holmes has possession. Holmes, lateral run, good movement here. He's got the dancing feet, finds Romain Franco. Franco finds Samet. Samet's gone without the ball. And that's an error against the Bulls here. Well, the officials are going to say, because it's gone to ground, I don't think it touched the Bradford player's arm, but because it's gone to ground, they're going to rule it's a knock-on. Bradford 
very, very nearly scoring their ninth score of the afternoon. Well, Tyra not kicked early in the count. It come off the back of one of the Swinton players. Holmes had it. He ran lateral. Good 30, 35 metres across the uh, the face of the post, inside the 20. Found that support of Franco. Um, and has Samet taken Franco's pass? He'd have been underneath the post. So, Swinton have kicked early here after that error from the Bulls. But Jaden Myers has tracked back and recovered possession. And now Bradford are going to go on the attack. Swinton looking vulnerable on that left-hand edge. Kieran Gills, 10 inside the Swinton half. Still 44 points to nil. Well, the last sort of 10, 15 minutes, it's almost like a, a, a training ground routine from both sides. Both sides trying a lot of unorthodox things. Suter now to Smith. Smith, 10 out, as we said. Bradford surging forward and Franklin Pelly's come back out here for the final eight minutes. He's on for the hat-trick this afternoon as we see Logan Bayliss look to score his second. Ant Walker comes in, wraps him up. Drags him to the turf. They're on the last tackle, the Bulls. Pele will get the hat-trick. The bulldozer's over again. It's a perfect free for Big Frank. Franklin Pele has just monstered and put the big don't argue on three Swinton defenders. And you could see that coming a mile off. A predictable rugby league move. Pelle has the hat trick. I think he's going to get the man of the match for it as well. He's been rock solid in defence and in attack. He has been nothing short of inspirational. He really does push the balls forward, and I don't say that lightly. We've got six minutes left on the clock here at Bader Card Odsall. And a chance now for Lily to get Bradford up to the big 5-0. Well, it's going to be Samet who's going to take over the uh, the kicking, because, of course, Jordan Lilly left the field for Tyron up. Well, it's going to be a totally different type of game next week. So, Jared Samet. Can he take the Bradford Bulls to 50? This will mean so much to Jared Samet on a personal note in front of his adoring Bradford fan base. Kick predictors at 81%. And Jared Samet can kick, you know. Bradford do hit the half century. We've got five minutes to go at Badakard Odsall. Look at this for a scoreline building momentum ahead of the playoffs next weekend. Bradford Bulls 50, Swinton Lions nil. Samet one from one this afternoon. As we've just said, it will be a total, totally different type of game next weekend. We still don't know who is coming to buy the card odsal next weekend. Because Barrow have drawn within two points of Widnes. It's Barrow 24, Widnes 26. An unbelievable afternoon of drama. Jaden Myers on the restart, now to Samet. Samet from his own 20 metre line. Samet's been held backwards in the tackle. Officials say it's perfectly legal. Ball's come loose now where Samet plays the ball. So it's going to be a scrum head and feed here to Swinton. Well, Tom Holmes has got the man of the match. As we said, he has been impeccable under the high balls. And he will need to be just as good again next week when potentially Sheffield might be coming to buy the card Odsall because if Barrow could stage a late comeback there, Despite Sheffield being beaten by Dewsbury, it'll be Sheffield who'll come to Wadsall next Sunday. So, final minutes of the regular season. Bradford 50, Swinton nil. It's the perfect tonic for Eamon O'Carroll and the Bulls ahead of 
knockout rugby league football, which starts in earnest next Sunday afternoon at Bar the Card Hudson. They'll be looking to keep Sweden to zero here as we see Jaden Hatton wrapped up there by Bayliss and making Bradford backed upon their own try line after that summit error as Gavin Benyon draws in the Bulls' defence of Pele and Smith and he's been play, told to play the ball. Five out from the Bradford line and because Romain Franco's coming as the third man, it's a penalty to Swinton. So 9-6 the penalty count now as Ant Walker against his former club. He's held up short. And with two minutes left on the clock, this could be Swinton's last chance to get some points on the board this afternoon as John Davis has gone straight in on Stevens. It's legal, it's fair, say the officials. And Reese Williams, his run is halted. What can Swinton do here with Benyon? Gavin Benyon, the former Warrington Wolves man once upon a time, is wrapped up there under fierce Bradford pressure. The Bulls will be focusing on the big fat zero. And they might just get the big fat zero because Lewis Hall has gone without the ball. Five metres out from the Bradford line. A 16th error of the afternoon for Swinton. And I tell you what, if Swinton make 16 errors and concede nine penalties against either Rochdale, Hunslick or Keefley in that championship versus League One grand final winner relegation playoff in a fortnight's time, they're going to be heading to League One. Full time has come in at Craven Park. It has finished Barrow 24, Witness 26. Crowd are counting us down here at Bardacard Old Soul. Kieran Gill will take the tackle from the scrum after that error from Swinton. And it's full time here. Bradford return to winning ways, just like they had done on the previous seven times after suffering defeat in the championship. And certainly they will take momentum into the playoffs. Bradford's defence 